Do you know, as I was on my way over here, you remember the Fazio family from New Brighton? Coach Fazio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And, Coach me in baseball. Right, his late brother Danny, and of course, uh, Greg's kids, Danny's kids. Well, someone always puts Christmas lights up long before Thanksgiving, right next to the Pulaski Fire Hall, where I always wanted to call a bingo game, okay? Well, Noel Valamont from Carlo College, this was my Christmas gift. She showed up out of nowhere because of a basketball game tonight. She plays basketball at that great place that is Carlo. And I said, could you please help us with the video? And she's shooting the video. So Christmas there came early. Go. Speaking of Christmas, I got to spend a couple of hours with my lovely daughter. She is a junior at Quigley where I'll be working coming up, what is today, Wednesday? Friday, during their uh, wonderful gala at the club at Shadow Lakes. But this came in the mail. And as I was sitting there eating some tomatoes at the table today at her house, I said, look, Eva, look, Eva. And I said, I had to bring this tonight. It was uh, kind of made out to Eva, but as in any Eva, really, or any student of high school age, because Geneva College is holding your open house. How cool is this? Come on. November 18th, tell them about this. Well, it's a big event. I mean, there's over 200 students signed up for this. And the recruiting process uh, has, has been, been different than in the last 20 years where, where students like juniors or even sophomores are making visits to college it's crazy so you know we both got daughters that are juniors and this summer I'll be <laughs> bringing my daughter over here to Geneva to show her where she'll be going to school I hope my daughter goes here I tell you this is a great place her grandfather Larry Matrazzo is oh. coming to open house he's an alum here my brother-in-law John Manzetti my sister Renee went here for a while but, you know, I seem to be always helping people. i got to tell you this quick story, and I'm sure I've told it to you a thousand times, so it's a thousand and one. I'm a waiter at Zero's Top of the Mall. Oh. The basketball coach at the time comes in. I'm waiting on him. I said, can I get you anything else? He said, yeah, how about a guard who can shoot off the dribble? I said, <laughs> he's at CCBC. Let me make a call. Mr. Joe Hogan, I twisted oh. and bend and said, please. He came here, met his lovely, became his wife. They had beautiful children. At least a height to get, and you know what? It's been a match made in heaven forever. I love yes. Geneva College, and it's nice to be here. Joe so just, Hogan, yes, good call. He did okay for himself. Yes, he did. Hey, Joe, you never call, you don't write. I need a job, help me out. All right, listen, here we go. We're going to get into some stories here that I think you want to talk about the Westminster game, but not this to start, but we're going to. Um, you had a little bit of a rough time. Uh, you took on W&J, the president of 31-17. Uh, you lost that final home game as you honored 17 seniors. The president's undefeated 9-0, 7-0 in the PAC. Geneva, on its second possession, Brian Stafford took the first play of the drive and ran up the left side for 60 yards. The GT settled for a 32-yard field goal by Andrew Dowler, 3-0 the score. I can hardly believe I can see this because you see the little spotlight's actually blinding me, but I'm going to forge ahead as all Gold Branson Heights kids do. Never say never. Just keep going, folks, moving forward. W&J settled for a field goal on its next drive, 3-3, heading into the second quarter. After a long W&J touchdown drive early in the quarter, Geneva proceeded to fumble back-to-back -back possessions, giving the Presidents a field goal, extended their lead 17-3. Geneva got some momentum back right before the half. The offense uh, went 70 yards in just 42 seconds, capped off by a 17-yard Touchdown pass from Stafford to Nick Monteleone, 17-10, heading into halftime. Big defensive performances by both teams in the second half. W&J scored in the fourth with two minutes to go, final 31-17. Stafford, 22 carries, 122 yards, threw for 109 yards and two scores. Joe Shively led the way with tackles, 15. Austin Jacobson had 11. Jared Hogan, Torin Salas each had 10. Saturday, the 11th, is Veterans Day at 11 o'clock on the road, Westminster. We'll get to that in a moment. But as you and I were talking, coming down the hall, you just can't give the football up, especially back-to-back -back fumbles. Right, Coach? No, it was 17-10. Um, and we had just intercepted a pass. And we're on the 20-yard line. And we fumbled the football. And uh, I think it gave us a great opportunity to get stay in that game. It was 17-10 going into the fourth quarter. In this offense, you have to hold on to the football. And, you know, we had some injuries. Uh, you know, Trent Marshall, let's face it, after the sixth game of the season, he was the number one rush Everything. running back in the country. He's had an ankle issue, and it's throwing our timing off. Um, but yeah, we had to overcome it. There's some positive things about the Tug and Jay game. They're one of the best teams in the league. Yeah. And we played, uh, I thought we played very, very well. All right. The defense did a very good job. I want to move on to this week because this is key. I think you could end on a winning note. 
I think it would definitely help you just kind of going into the off season, setting the stage for what lies ahead. Um, Saturday uh, is Veterans Day, as we mentioned, 11 o'clock on the road. Westminster 6-3 and three and 5-2 and two in the pack, meaning uh, President's Athletic Conference. Uh, they lost to Case Western Reserve University Saturday in Cleveland, 41-10. Senior quarterback from Boca Raton, Florida, Paul Colombo went 15 of 32, 200 yards and a score. Senior running back Dominic McKinley uh, from Greensburg rushed for 74 yards on nine carries. And uh, also Bryson uh, Polioni of du Dubois uh, had five catches, a season best for 71 yards. So talk about Westminster. This is one you've got to get. They're very talented. Um, I mean, going into the late uh, play, I think uh, there were a few coaches that would have picked Westminster as the favorite to win the league. They are that talented um, on both sides of the ball. They do a great job in stretching you in so many different ways. Uh, and, and the quarterback's a senior. I mean, he's he's very, very good. And we're going to have to play error for you again to be able to compete, to be able to win. Our guys are up for it, though. I mean, we Great rivalry here, too. Great rivalry. Best, rivalry. best college football that you're going to find anywhere, I believe, in this region. Coming up, we're going to be talking a little Steelers and a little pit football. Pitt, of course, tomorrow night, North Carolina, 93-7. The fans, Steelers, 1 o'clock on the road Sunday, Lucas Oil Field, Indianapolis. And uh, that game, of course, we'll be talking about on the Coons Market Black and Gold Sunday show. I want to thank you so much for inviting me to this beautiful facility. I've been coming here all season. This is our last video for this football season. Just to summarize, I know you're always looking for excellence, but I think you got to look at the product as far as your student athletes and how we see these wonderful people, even from other schools like uh, Noel coming to this beautiful campus and enjoying what a great college life is all about. Uh, you know, it, the season in terms of what happened on the scoreboard was not a successful one. I think we got better as a program. I think uh, defensively we were very young in the beginning of the year, and we got better. Uh, our special teams the last couple of weeks have been solid. And offensively, uh, this is only the second year we're running the triple option. You know, we had a young man that was number one in the country that went down with an injury. Um, not to mention a six foot five receiver that got hurt in camp for his senior year. So. You always have injuries. The tough thing at Geneva is we've got to be able to recruit to build depth. And to do that, uh, you, you just got to be able to retain people. You got to be able to go out and get people that, quote unquote, you shouldn't have at your level. And other schools in our league have that, and we're working toward it. So I feel very, very good because of the administration that we have right now uh, about where we're headed with this. Uh, a very difficult, again, having the win-loss record that we do, it doesn't sit well with me. And, uh, you know, I'll contemplate that after the season, but the kids we have are incredible, Rob. I'm they just are. telling you, this is one of the favorite groups, uh, favorite teams I've, you know, had as far as coaching. They responded to everything. All right, that's it, ladies and gentlemen, for the season. Thank you so much. We'll be back in just a little bit. Stay with us on a busy night here on the campus of Virginia College, College Hill, Beaver Falls.